Hey guys, this is Joel from Queen Technologies. Hope you guys are well. And it's another day, it's another school. What are we doing today? LGFL, their firewall's played up. So what they've done, they have, show you what the firewall is. All right, so that bad boy, this one here, the one on the bottom, that firewall is playing up. They are unable to remote to it. They are unable to upgrade it as well. So I need to swap it out with this one, which they've sent very quickly. So the reason why they were able to determine that there was a problem because I requested some ports and URLs to be open for a telephone company. So therefore the phones system in the school to communicate to the telephone company hosting system because there was a problem with it the school wasn't getting wasn't able to use the phone to call out in my previous video there was a similar issue that issue was purely based on the switch itself playing up this one is actually to do with enabling the company to speak to the devices and for the devices to speak to the company's hosting system to make the calls hope that makes sense so i'm just going to swap it also i'm meant to add additional ram to this server here that one this is an ml something and then you've got the old one at the bottom which is not doing anything yeah while i'm doing that the school's internet will go down all right let's open up this box so, new firewall <laughs> Yep, always we'll take a picture before and after. Even though I know what ports will go where, but just in case something goes wrong and you just need to double check. There we go. So you lose these a little bit. So this is what righty tighty. Now, making sure, obviously I don't want this to fall down and damage. This has to be collected as well. Swap my hands around. Get this a bit more loose as well. So this is the new one. All right, I'm gonna tell you a little secret. It doesn't look new. It looks like it might be a kit from somewhere else. It looks a bit used, but as long as it works, that's the main thing. Let's do right and tight. Okay, guys. Well, I didn't realise it. Friggin. They realized this was resting on it so, so much. It's quite big, the router. So just give it a bit of, of a lift to support it. All right, cool. So what we're doing now, I'm just going to plug these ports back where they're meant to be. That one's, that one's there. That's the link to the router, the red one. This is port one, port two. We'll have another subnet mask range and port two will be another subnet mask range. You should separate the net network by that way, but they don't really do that anymore. A is obsolete, I'm plugging it in anyway. And for the management light, I think that's it. Two, three, four, five, 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 five. All right, let's switch that bad boy on. We'll see what happens. See if I could get. Oh, so it's on at the moment and I'm waiting for that status light to go green and if you can see it, that one there. Yeah, you should hopefully see an amber light. That's where the status light is. Hopefully that turns green and then we're good to go. I'm now shutting down the, the virtual server. I'm adding some RAM to it because I want to create another VM on here and there's not enough RAM to accommodate the VM. So I'm just going to quickly do that. Wasn't here, so let's just get this open. I love like HP and Dell servers. Reason being, easy to open up. Just a little screw it behind the, at the back here, this one here, and then it's just a bit of a pull. Now I'm hoping it's pretty straightforward. So you can see one RAM there already. I'm just going to add it to another slot. I'm going to add the RAM to that slot. That's it. There's 16 in this one. I'm going to add another one. Pre-warning, you need to be wearing protective gears when you're dealing with a motherboard. I'm not, I haven't done the correct preparation because I haven't got time, so don't copy me. Cool, fits perfect. I'll show you quickly this. Uh, you should see the green light flashing, all green. So that we're good to go. So all I'm gonna do now is turn this bad boy back on. The RAM's gonna register and then hopefully, fingers crossed, internet gets back on. Cool. So we'll press the power button. So the Pro Alliance system, the GUI interface, it's booting up. I'll hide the IP address from you. It's basically detected that I've added RAM and making sure it's correct RAM and it also is in the right socket, the right PCIe, and it has registered it. It's now 32 gig memory and 32 gig available, which is great. Cool, now it's booting up into the Windows server. So we're waiting for that now. And then once that boots up, I'll log in and see if the internet's working. All right, system's logged on. Sorry, the operating system's booted up back now. It looks like there is internet, which is great. So I'm just quickly logging in. Put this old one away. Well, faulty one, which I'll probably sort out. Re like, I reckon they'll fix it because they'll have to do a hard config 
reset, see if there's any hardware faults. If there isn't, they'll just use it as a spare because they were unable to do an update. So sometimes you need to get down there so they could do like a hard reset and see if the problem still persists. If they could do an upgrade on this, on this um, firewall, then they'll just use it as a spare again, reallocate it to somewhere else. Should they realistically do that? Well, it's a business first and foremost, and these firewalls are quite expensive. So I don't know. It's one of them ones really. It's not up to me. Well, as long as the service is working, that's the main thing. Cool. All right. Yeah, everything just looks good at the moment. Um, so I'll look. Open up the VM. Making sure. Yep. Internet's working fine. Great. Now I'm opening up the VM. Making sure the actual domain controller has started. You can allocate eight gig of RAM. You might think to yourself, why that low? To be honest, it's only managing like six or seven PCs. The actual school that I'm located at the moment, they are a Google school. So everything, how they use the curriculum is through Google devices. So Chromebooks and obviously Google Drive, Sheets, et cetera, et cetera. So they only need access to the internet, which this could do like without using a lot of resources. If it was like, if this specific domain controller was like, I don't know, managing 100 plus devices, Roman, less than that, let's say 50. Yeah, 50, Roman profiles, all that kind of stuff. Then yeah, 100% I would have raised it, but it really is just managing like six PCs. That's it. And then the rest is just doing the HTTP, which is giving out the internet for uh, the rest of the school. And yeah, it's hardly using any resources, but it didn't have enough resources for me to add another VM, which I need to do because something to do with, I need to create a VM. Why didn't you create a VM for? Something, I need to create another VM to install a cybersecurity monitoring software. So it needed to be on a Linux operating system. So I needed something which therefore will constantly be on, never be turned off. You know, this will be the, the cheapest and easiest solution. I needed to get RAM for the server anyway, so why not? And the RAM was like, I don't know, I think 50 pounds. So yeah, plus, you know, additional RAM on the server is always a good thing. That's it. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>